Hello, hello, hello. Honor and thanks to the Lord for giving us this time on this midweek faith boost. It is so good that you could connect and be a part of what God is doing this day and what God is saying to you today to get your faith boosted. So if you know the drill, please like, click the like button, share with somebody, invite them to watch and listen in, whatever media, media platform that you're using, whether it's uh, Facebook or YouTube, please go ahead and share and you know invite that person. So today we're talking about uh, lessons from the Good Samaritan. Now, there are a lot of lessons that we can uh, draw from the story of the Good Samaritan. Uh, today, we only have time for a few because, you know, we want to get a quick boost looking into the Word and really trying to understand certain things that, um, uh, that we can draw from the story of the Good Samaritan. So, I'm going to read from Luke 10, verse uh, 25 to uh, uh, 37. That's where the story is, and I read from the English Standard Version. Verse 25 says, Behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to, to test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law, and how do you read it? This is what Jesus asked the man who, was, who wanted an answer to that question about eternal life. And he answered, the lawyer answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, the lawyer, desiring to justify himself, so he wanted to put himself right, you know. He said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So, likewise, a Levite, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So, likewise, um, but I beg your pardon, um, verse 35, So, likewise, a Levite, when he came to the uh, place, and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave, uh, gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which one of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? And now the, the lawyer answers, and he says, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. <laughs> it's an interesting story. This guy was clever, and he wanted to put himself right. Now, I was making some observations about this conversation, and I saw that this parable actually, was, that he told about the, the Good Samaritan, it was prompted by a question, the most important question that anybody in the world who exists and cares about what they accomplish in life. The most important question is, how can I really, really, really live a full life? How can I inherit eternal life? And Jesus' answer 
it, he, he answers with a question, and he answers with a question. Jesus says, what is written in the law, and how do you read it? You see, we all read with a pair of lenses. Whatever you've been exposed to has formed a belief system, and it causes you to have a certain outlook on life. And it's that pair of lenses that you're going to read something with. And Jesus was curious to know what is written in the law and how does this lawyer read it? Because how you read it can be very subjective, but there's an objective way. And that is reading something with the whole counsel of the Word of God, understanding that this is what God says. And what God says about <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> any given subject is spread all over the Bible. We don't have a topical Bible. We have a Bible that is in narrative form. It tells a story that unfolds in a process of time. And through the, the daily ongoings, the daily living of people, we have God revealing himself in a process of time. So it's interesting that way. So now, Jesus, when this man answers, the, first, the answer he gives about what's written in the law and how he read it. Number one, he says, you shall love the Lord your God. <clears throat> and the next thing he says is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But then he makes two qualifications. He doesn't just say these things. Actually, the Bible says, with your heart, with your soul, with your strength, and with your mind. That's a qualification. When it comes to loving your neighbor, it says, as yourself, meaning be as concerned about your neighbor, your neighbor's needs, as you are about yourself. Now, you see, these teachers were always trying to summarize the law of God and trying to simplify it so that they can bring the fruit law hanging. There were 613 laws that they needed, needed to follow. And these guys were always striving to simplify it so that they can manage it. And... Uh, now, when you look at these commands, both these commands are qualified with a total claim. When you, if you're going to love the Lord, you're going to love him with all your soul, heart, and mind, and strength. If you're going to love your neighbor, you're going to love him exactly as you love yourself. And I believe Jesus was trying to get this guy to, to, to a place where he was, he was going to see that it's not possible for you to do this. But this was a lawyer. And he wasn't, Jesus wasn't going to just get away with it. This guy wanted to really, really look good. He wanted to, uh, to justify himself. Now, when he has, he's asking this question, what must I do? If you read it in the original language, the word do is uh, in a special tense that is implying what, what action, a single grand action can I do in order to, to inherit eternal life? What single action can I do? But when Jesus responds, he responds in another tense, which implies go on doing it. It's not going to take one action and once for all, like one grand action. You're going to have to be doing this for the rest of your life. You're going to have to be doing it. When he answers and says, love you, you shall love the Lord your God uh, as, uh, uh, and uh, love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus says, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to do it for the rest of your life. And this guy knows that it's not possible, humanly speaking. Jesus was trying to get him to see that this was not something he could accomplish in his own uh, power. He was trying to get him to see his own deficiency. And the guy was clever. Because Jesus says he's going to have to do this continuously. But the man was looking for a DIY religion, which, you know, whereby he was going to do it himself. So he wanted to put himself right. And um, he wanted to reduce this command to a manageable size. And that's what we try to do as people. We want to define things our own way. So then he asked a question, a very clever question. So who is my neighbor? He didn't want to admit the fact that this was impossible, an impossible standard, uh, humanly speaking. 
So he wanted Jesus to define what a neighbor is. <laughs> he, because when you define something, you limit it. So he wanted to limit the size of this so that he's able to accomplish it. But you know, Jesus is a genius of all the ages. <laughs> Jews were told that your neighbor was a Jew, a fellow Jew. When you saw a Jew struggling, that's your neighbor. But his answer, Jesus' answer was different. He was bringing something new. He was changing mindsets. It's a new and fresh religion that is of the heart. A religion that was based not on human effort, but on the work of the Spirit on the inside. And Jesus then tells the story of a, a, a Samaritan who passed by, a Jew who didn't pass by a Jew. A Levite passed by and, a, and another uh, leader passed by. But this Samaritan, he stopped for him and helped him. And this was so against And Now, when you talk about the history of the road that they used to avoid the Samaritans, it was a very dangerous road. It had so many ravines and caves where thugs were hiding. As late as 1926, we heard stories. There are stories recorded of that way being very dangerous. And... Uh, and what we see is that Jesus is trying to reverse their thinking about a neighbor or definition of a neighbor. And what are the lessons that we learn from the Good Samaritan story? Number one, Jesus' definition of a neighbor is utterly practical. A neighbor is, is someone uh, who does something about someone else's need. That's number one. A neighbor is somebody who does something about someone else's need. Not just somebody who watches or by virtue of being close. If I asked you who your neighbor was, you're going to tell me about the adjacent neighbor, opposite neighbor. But a neighbor, in Jesus' definition, is somebody who does something about someone else's need. The second lesson is we must never limit the word neighbor to people next door. Neighbor means anyone in the entire world who is in need and you are in a position to do something about their need. That's your neighbor. That's your neighbor, according to Jesus. That's the second lesson. Number three, the question the lawyer should have been asking is, whose neighbor am I? Not who is my neighbor, Whose neighbor am I? And when you think about it yourself in your life today, who is your neighbor? Whose neighbor are you? Who is it that God has put in your life that you're supposed to refresh and help? They may not even be good people. They may not be nice at all. But we must be asking, whose neighbor am I? Who are the people that God has brought close to me that need a touch of grace through me? Who is it that God is pointing out in my life that I need to, to refresh, that I need to help, that I need to guide? That is the question. Whose neighbor am I? The fourth lesson is that this is an act of mercy. It's an undeserved Act. This person was foolish to go down that road by himself. It was it, He knew exactly what was going to happen. He was avoiding the Samaritans because they didn't believe that the Samaritans were even worthy of any love at all. But this was an act of mercy. When Jesus asked which one was his neighbor, this guy, this lawyer, he couldn't even say the Samaritan. That's how bad it was. They hated the Samaritans. They didn't want to have any encounter to the point where they would go down a road that was dangerous just to avoid contact with the Samaritan. But when, when he's answering, he says, the one who helped the man. He couldn't even say the Samaritan. If it was a Levite, maybe he was going to say the Levite. <laughs> That's how bad it was. When this man answers, Jesus says, okay, so off you go. Go ahead and do that. 
Go on and do that. Jesus is speaking of an attitude of mind. That we should have a certain attitude concerning people that we meet out there. The Samaritan story is about crossing barriers and boundaries. And, and I don't mean it in a negative way. It's crossing over to the people that, are, that we dislike. Uh, Jesus is, is saying, go ahead and do this and you will leave. And remember the tense is, go on doing this and you will inherit eternal life. It's going to take a certain disposition, an attitude of mind and heart. In order for you to do this, you're going to need the strength of God each and every day. Living on purpose, understanding that the will of God is that every person be touched by the grace of God. Do this to all those who despise you. All those people you hate, the people you dislike, do good to them. That's what he's saying here. And if you think about it, if you know people in your life that have hurt you and despised you and done all kinds of things, those are the ones that Jesus is saying that we should do good, that we should love them. Love the Lord our God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, it takes a touch of grace in order for you to pull that off. You can't do it on your own. You need the grace of God. And that's a point that Jesus was making to this lawyer. He wanted him to understand that if you're going to love your neighbor, neighbor defined as defined by Jesus, is going to take a change of heart, a deeper understanding of God's concern over humanity and everyone deserving a chance to feel the touch of grace. And he uses a story that revolutionizes their thinking. Do this. Go on doing this. There is no one grand action that you're going to do. You're going to have to do this over and over and over for the rest of your life. As long as you live on earth, love your neighbor as yourself. Be as concerned. And it's going to take the grace of God to do that. No human being can do it. So who is your neighbor today? Who is it that God has put in your life that needs to be affected by you? I'm going to leave you with that question. And I believe each one of us has got an answer. The lessons we learn is that Jesus' definition is practical. The second is we should never limit the word neighbor to those close to us. Neighbor means anybody in the world that we have an opportunity to help or within our reach. And the question would be, we should be asking is, whose neighbor am I? Whose neighbor am I? And the last thing is that this was an act of mercy, undeserved. Who is it that doesn't deserve your mercy that you need to show mercy to? In that moment of sobriety, I want to leave you with this question. And I pray that God will touch your heart and cause you to look around. And reach down in your heart and trust God to help you love as he wants you to love. In the name of Jesus. I pray this has blessed you and it has caused you to think through some things. These are lessons that we can learn from the Good Samaritan. God richly bless you. So glad you were part of this Faith Boost broadcast. What we'd ask you to do is go to YouTube and subscribe to the Miracle Life channel. On Facebook, like the Miracle Life Facebook page. That way you'll receive notification when there's new content. We've got content like this that's regularly coming out to bless you, to help you. Also notifications that will help you in your walk with God, what's happening at the church and things like that. And with notifications, it actually gets pushed to you and it's a great way to be reminded. So go to the YouTube channel, subscribe and go to the Facebook page and like it. God bless you.